Hello everyone, welcome to my channel lab to learn IT. In this video, first uh, we will be adding an additional network adapter to the TrueNAS VM for our uh, for a testing of multi uh, multipathing concepts in VMware ESXi and then we will be configuring some basic settings on our two NAS storage VM using the web GUI So let's get started. So in order to add the uh, network adapter I need I know the IP address for the true NAS devices uh, Let me open the web interface the IP address for the true NAS devices HTTPS it is HTTP and uh, the IP address is 10.1.1.15 so as soon as I click on that I uh, browse that I get the sign in the screen I select my root and username password that I provided at the time of configuration of this tunes device and then I click on log on once I click on log on I need to select the power button and shut it down from there it asks for your confirmation select the confirm box and then click on shut down so right now our uh, TUNAS VM is shutting down and once it is shut down we need to go to the SNES device and then click on add it virtual machine settings and select another network adapter from the add hardware wizard so you select the network adapter click on finish and here from our LAN segments, we are, I'm going to select this storage two for uh, to be configured as a as a secondary adapter for our uh, TrueNAS device. So you can see, storage one is the is belong um, storage one belongs to the first adapter uh, first network 10.1.1.1 and the storage two belongs to the 10.2.2. Network. So I hit on OK. Once I hit on OK, I can again click on power on this virtual machine and uh, this lets the virtual machine power on once the virtual machine powers on i need to again go back to my workstation device from where i'm browsing the ui so let it come up then we'll, we'll go to the workstation So here it is up as you can see right now uh, there is no uh, um, it does not have it does not show the interface uh, that we added so let me select the first option configuring the network interface and it now shows the two interfaces so I already have the interface one connected and has an IP address assigned to it of 10.1.1.15 so I'm giving it uh, the interface name as two and it asked me if I want to remove the current network setting because it does not have any current network setting so I just uh, select no it wants me to configure the DSP setting and I don't want the DSP setting to be configured so I'm selecting no again and here it gives me an option to configure the IPv4 network so let me select yes and hit enter and now it's asking me for me for the interface name again and the interface name is EM1 as you can see up there in a, when it gives us the choices so I give it the internet interface name and select hit enter and now it's asking me to provide the IP address so the IP address that I'm going to provide this one is from the uh, storage second storage network so IP subnet range that is 10.2.2.15 with a subnet mask of 24 and it wants me to configure the IPv6 I don't have an IPv6 network so I'm selecting no as an option and then I hit enter and now you can see we have two IP addresses um, showing as HTTP and HTTPS so uh, now we are configured from the uh, uh, from the command line portion of it we need to go back to our admin workstation from where we will be configuring the rest of the settings on TrueNAS device so let's go back to that I'm selecting then workstation 1 and now I open my TrueNAS uh, uh, my edge uh, browser and browse the TrueNAS device with the IP address of 10.1.1.15 
as soon as I hit that uh, in the browser I get the option to put the credentials and once I provide the credentials I should be able to connect yeah so from here now it's the time to configure some of the most common and basic settings that uh, we require in order for us to NAS device to work correctly so I go to the network settings and the network settings I go to the global configuration and from global configuration I am going to provide some of the most basic settings that it requires to function correctly so right now it asks me for the host name and as per our uh, naming conventions the TrueNAS 1 is going to be TrueNAS 01 the domain name as we all know is Stark industries.com it's asking me to provide the DNS server name so here I am pro going to provide the DNS server name as 192.168.1.5 and another DNS that we discussed about we'll be going to configure in the next chapter is 1.4 so here we have provided the settings that it requires we don't need to configure the default gateway and now hit I hit save here let me check what I've done wrong so sorry it, it needs to be 4 actually that's why it is complaining 1.4 so I select save after correcting the message and now it has saved the settings let's check what all other settings do we need to take care of so we now see the two network adapter the network summary shows up with the two network adapter and the DNS configuration the interfaces shows up correctly the static routes we don't require any right now in a storage pool there is nothing to be configured uh, the disk we have let's go back to check the uh, check the system settings for general so in general it gives us the settings here that we need to configure so we can select the time zone and the time zone is in a standard IST time zone so we need to select it appropriately let me browse it to Asia and then select the settings from there bear with me for a moment so here we have the IST time zone settings done so let me select save for NTP server let's delete the default NTP servers and provide the NTP server as our domain controller delete it and delete it again confirm and delete and add our DNS server 192.168.1.5 and click submit so let's see what do we get any other message so I've selected the option first we'll check if it mm, it's able to configure it yeah it's able to configure it and then we go to the advanced let's check if there is any setting that we need to configure we don't need any settings to be configured here NTP is done boot no need to do anything here and the rest of the settings looks okay so let me just log out from here and log in again so I'm logging out and now I'm going to log in again and see if it has taken the effect storage 2 
So after conf configuring some of the rules on my firewall, as you can see here, you can take a screenshot if you want to configure the firewall in the same manner that I have configured. So you can see the rules are identical on storage one and storage two networks. So you can take these rules and configure on your network as well. And then you should be able to configure the NTP server settings without any errors. So once these settings are configured, I think our storage, um, you know, storage settings, the uh, two NAS settings are configured correctly now. And now we should be able to configure the ISCSI targets on this uh, two NAS storage device. So in order to keep the video short, um, I'm uh, uh, stopping here. And uh, you just practice and let me know in case you face any issue while configuring your two NAS device or PFSense firewall uh, by leaving your comments and um, uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible to help you out with your firewall internet configuration. Well, thank you so much for your, uh, for your support, for watching my videos. And if you think I'm doing a good job, in that case, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel and share with your colleagues as well. Thank you, and you have a great day. Bye-bye.